What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. My name is Abe and this is LTH. And in this video, I wanna talk about something a little bit different, but also has to do with communication. We always talk about the right to privacy over the internet and within our home labs, but we never really talk about the topic of communication between people when the internet goes down. And so that's where this comes into the picture. So right here is a little device that we can use for Mesh-tastic or Mesh-core. And so what is Mesh-tastic? Well, essentially Mesh-tastic is a radio frequency or protocol that you can use over specific spectrum depending on what country you are in with this device. So this is essentially the device that supports those frequencies, those encryption standards, and the actual antenna itself. And then you can plug things into this like uh, a battery pack, a screen, a monitor, whatever, but these can be picked up for like $15. And then you can even just plug it directly into your phone over type C and power it that way. So you don't need to bring anything else with you, just your phone, a cable and this device. So let's go over to the workbench and let me show you what this looks like on the phone and how you can communicate between two people over a completely private network. And again, here's just what it looks like close up. It's just a little device with a little motherboard sitting on it, the antenna coming out of it, sitting in the middle, and then some pins for some other features. If you're going to use that, like I was saying, with a battery backup, and whatever else. In this case, we're gonna use it in the most simple format at just $15, just to show you guys how little you can spend to get this kind of flexibility. Okay, so how do we flash one of these devices once we have it in our possession? Well, we're gonna to go to meshcore.co.uk and on their website, they have a built-in flasher designed for Chrome. So if you click web flasher on the top right, we will see that we will be presented with a web-based application and then you can find your device based on whatever one you bought. So this is a great list to go and look at to see what's supported or you can use the one I have linked in the description which I've bought many of and they've all worked great. So in our case, this one is made by a company called Seed and it's specifically the NRF52 XXXX and there's a picture of it. So if you're unsure of like, oh, I might not have the same device, you can look at the model number on the front of it, just like the picture shows, or just compare your physical device to the picture to ensure you have the same one. Now you can see we have a couple op options here. Like I mentioned earlier, you can create repeater nodes and put them in high places so people have great line of sight. And then one, two devices that are really far away can both see the repeater and then that information can bounce up and back down to the other device that's super far away, potentially tens of miles, 20, 30, 40, 50 miles away, if conditions permit. But in our case, we can also flash two ways. So via a connection to our device by a Bluetooth connection, which this device has, or just over USB. In my case, I'm going to do Bluetooth because if I wanna be able to charge my phone, I need to be able to unplug this from my phone. Or I can plug this into my phone, it connects over Bluetooth and uses my phone for power. But let's say my phone power's low, I can connect this device and my phone into a battery pack or a solar panel, and then they talk over Bluetooth to keep the ports free for charging, and I can still use both at the same time. So once you're in here, I'm just gonna select the latest version and I'm gonna enter DFU mode, which allows our device to be ready to be flashed. And so then when I click that, we'll get a little pop-up over here on the left, right next to the URL. And I'm gonna to connect to the device. Well, it's in DFU mode and we can see it is active. And now we can click the flash button to put the latest firmware version on our device. And now we can actually see the NRF serial connection is there. We will click to connect and it will flash the software. And then I will plug this into another device and show you guys how they can talk to each other. One thing I wanna to mention too, you may need to try multiple type C cables that you have. Not all type C cables are the same. And so some may fail to make a connection with your computer and your device. So if you do continue to get a flash delay, 
please ensure that you try a different type C cable or a one at which you know is a higher quality than a super cheap one like from the gas station. In my case, I actually did just have to switch USB-C cables and now it works great. One thing I want to mention real quick too, once this is flashed and you plug it into the first time to your MeshCore app, it will ask for a password. The password is one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you need to ensure that you type that in so it'll be able to connect to your device. If you're super frustrated and don't know how to connect this to your phone, that is the password. Okay, and so once it's plugged into the app, it looks like this. And the device we're gonna see is plugged into our phone, getting power, but we're going to connect to it over Bluetooth. So now we can see that it is syncing all of the channels and we're in. And so you can look at things in here to depend on what you want to do and to find other devices to get messages between you and whoever you're trying to communicate with. Okay, and so how do we add our contacts all together if we wanna create a group with family and friends? There's a couple ways you can do that. If we look at the app when we're on the channels page, we can click the dots at the top right and we can add a contact, add a channel, discover contacts, and my contact code. So if I do add a contact, I can grab the information from this person or import from my keyboard if I would like to, or I can scan the QR code on their phone. So I would open up the QR code like so, my contact code like this, I would open it up and then I would have the other person scan it. Or I can show you, I will have it open on another device and then I will click add a contact, scan from QR code. The QR code pops up and scan super fast, just like that. You can see they are already added, but that's how you would do it. And then I go over to my contacts page. I can click my contact and now I can send them a message. I should also mention when you add a contact, both people need to add each other as contacts on both phones. So you will need to scan the QR code and the other person will need to scan your QR code. That is the same thing with channels. So another thing I would like to show you real quick is this. If we go to the channels tab, we can click add a channel. When you add a channel, you can create a channel, join a private channel and scan again with a QR code. So if I go create a private channel, I click or I name it LTH, that channel is now named. We get a QR code for this channel once again. So I'm gonna scan this channel QR code on my other device. So now we're both in the same private channel. Okay, so now I'm looking at my um, tablet and you can see I'm not typing on my phone. So I'm on another device. And if I type in hello, and I click send in this private channel. Now we can see this user now received the message on my phone over these little antenna systems called LoRa. So that is how you set up Meshtastic. That's how you add users. That's how you flash your devices. And that's how you can privately communicate over a network that's completely independent where you guys hold the keys, the encryption keys on your local devices complete anonymity, security is in your hands, it's decentralized, uh, you don't have to rely on anything else. So let me know what you guys think about MeshCore in the comments below. Thank you for watching. My name is Abe, signing off with another video.